it is important that um, if we are to live true to the call and commitment of the Constitution, we need to have space for a conversation and negotiate the protocols of practicing that Constitution. And uh, there are many spaces of negotiations. An election is a negotiation. Um, advocacy that we do every day is a negotiation. Um, civic um, action of dissenting or agreeing is a part of negotiation. But we think that officially, officially, uh, there has been no site for uh, that negotiation, and uh, some of the ideas that we want to raise today point us to that negotiation. Uh, I am of the opinion, for example, that the referendum that was being suggested by Okora Kenya was going to be a very important negotiation on how to understand devolution, how to refine the relationship between the executive and um, um, the various arms of government, how to deal with the location of resources, how to deal with issues of uh, county citizenship and national citizenship, but that did not happen. So that was the first remark that I wanted to make. Then there are two substantive remarks that I now want to build on, which sort of then are my contributions to that um, call to negotiation. Uh, in everyday life, I work at Pamoja Trust, and Pamoja Trust works essentially in the informal settlements. And so I've taken a very close attention and I've been engaged at a fairly personal level in the aftermath of elections to follow through and understand and indeed intervene um, in the various acts of resistance, uh, violence, destruction, and triumph that have taken place, and most of them have been located in the informal settlements. And uh, I have a proposition that what we have seen this time around is something that should call our attention to rethinking the role of police and the role of security in our country. It seems to me, and you could see it from the pre-election thinking, that the government and indeed the police normally refers to the issue of security in a binary, that it's either security or insecurity. And what the government therefore says that it wants to do is to provide security as a framework for protecting property and life. Unfortunately, they rarely talk about protecting liberty and dignity. Now, so what did we see before the elections? What we saw was a clear mobilization of security operators in a fairly excessive manifestation of force to go to certain locations that the various arms of government, including the, the so-called National Cohesion and Integration Commission, the executive, the police intelligence, had mapped as hotspot areas. And so what they did was to, in their own way, to transport order into those areas so as to forestall disorder. And then what we saw after uh, the election results were announced were basically a series of engagements that uh, I think we should take a bit of time to try and interpret. Take, for example, Lakisama which is in East Nairobi and is one of the affluent areas in East of Nairobi. In Lakisama, the police went and camped at the Moi International Sports Stadium. And then um, in the evening of the day when the election results were being uh, announced, they moved two hours before they moved, crossed the bridge and moved into the settlements. And immediately the results were announced. Somehow there was an uproar uh, of rage and celebration in same measure. There were sections where there were celebrations, there were sections where there were um, rage. And what the police did then was to enter into both circuits. They entered into the circuit of rage and the circuit of, of, a, of, um, of, um, of celebration. And um, the police met at violence. It, in Lakisama is the police who started to loot the shops. The people were not the first to loot the shops in Lakisama. The police looted shops. The police uh, established barriers, illegal barriers. So there was uh, a miniature curfew. Uh, the police then, um, as we get to know, uh, killed a couple of people. And uh, the police also uh, have arrested a couple of people. I think that has not been followed through very closely. 
and um, then we had the role of the media. The media for quite some time was mute, but then when they came out to start speaking about what was happening, the narrative was, look, but uh, we have to protect lives, people are looting, and then of course Matiangi came and said no peaceful protester was killed, that those who were killed or those who were arrested by the police were thugs, were people who were destroying property and so on. For us to understand this, I want to take you to Canada. Look at what the police did during the G20. What they did was first to create a cordon, a five meter cordon, and they told protesters no passing through this cordon. That was not protected by any law. The documents that we have from a couple of our friends who are doing research on security questions suggest that the cabinet somehow had approved a night before a statute that allows the police to enforce that code. And that statute, of course, is as irregular as the gazettement of Kasarani as a confinement center when the police were doing the so-called anti-Al-Shabaab uh, you know, swap sometimes back in Sicily. But I just picked this particular one because I wanted to illustrate why negotiation would be the route, and it is asked then to explore the contours of those negotiations. Thank you very much.